This video is sponsored by Omaze. More on them later. A few months ago, I took this little 114th scale RC buggy, put some wings on it, and made it fly, with the intention of it being a ground effect vehicle. Although it did work, I certainly wouldn't call it a good ground effect vehicle. After that, I had the idea of strapping some more ducted fans onto it and seeing how fast I could get it to go. Now, most fast cars are designed to have as much aerodynamic downforce as possible so that the wheels don't slip on the pavement. This is achieved with wings in the front, spoilers in the back, and other more complex aerodynamic devices, all with the purpose of pushing the car into the ground and maintaining traction during turns. But in my opinion, turns are kind of overrated anyways. I mean, we all know the fastest way from point A to point B is in a straight line. So for that reason, I'm going to forget about downforce and try to utilize aerodynamics for a different purpose. And that is, keeping a little tiny RC car stable even with 2 kilowatts of EDFs on top of it. To do that, I'm basically just turning it into an airplane without wings. The back is going to have a horizontal stabilizer with elevons to control the pitch and roll. And it will also have two vertical stabilizers with rudders to control the yaw. The combination of all those things should allow us to keep the vehicle stable at super high speeds, despite the fact that it only has a 7.5 inch wheelbase. Here are some shots of the build. I'm using four 50mm EDFs instead of just the one it was using before. They are counter-rotating too, so there should be no torque roll effect on the vehicle. The body is kind of based around these two wooden dowels, and the outside shell is made from foam board. Lots and lots of foam board. In order to get as much passive yaw stability as possible, I made the body really long. Way longer than a 1 14th scale car would normally be. Here's the side panels going on, and here's the tail section. It's basically just three layers of foam board stacked together to make a symmetrical KF airfoil. We want it to be symmetrical so it doesn't create any lift. Then I glued that along with the vertical stabilizers onto the back. Next I routed all the servo wires through the body and the ESC signal and power wires. And then put on the lower body panels because aerodynamics underneath are just as important as aerodynamics on top. To finish it up I installed a PixRacer flight controller running ArduPilot Plane and a 4-in-1 ESC to drive the motors. I'm using ArduPilot Plane in fly-by-wire A mode so that it provides angular stabilization to the vehicle, but does not try to control altitude at all. Another reason is that it has data logging, so I can use that to keep track of the top speed. It's got rudders for steering, and it also steers with the, the wheels of the car in there. Um, and then it's got differential thrust for steering as well. So there's three different modes of steering. And then for general stability, it has pitch control and roll control. The problem right now is that it doesn't have brakes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, need to, I need to figure out something with brakes. The funny thing is, is that it's just a little four wheel drive buggy in there. <laughs> it's actually zero wheel drive because it's fan powered now, not wheel driven. But it's a pretty short wheelbase. That's why it turns so sharp. I took it out to the field for some preliminary tests and it turned out the only way to slow down was by turning sharply. It did not take long for me to realize that I would definitely need brakes. Oh. God damn. Oh. There's so much. Oh, f me. Shit. Fuck. Ah. Can you run the fans backwards? I could, yeah. But there's not really a super easy way to do that. Oh. Yeah, I guess they have to stop all the way first. The ESCs that I had been using did not support bi-directional motor control, so I replaced that with a BL Heli ESC and set it up for bi-directional control and then set up the reverse thrust feature in ArduPilot, which is pretty slick. This makes it so that my throttle operates normally, but then once I flip this switch, the throttle then controls the motors in reverse. I just have to be sure to drop the throttle before hitting the reverse switch because the motors probably don't like having their direction changed while under power. All this actually worked quite well to slow the car down. So now that we have brakes, it's time for some high speed tests. It looks like the nose is dragging. Yep, definitely some wear there. I need more up trim on the elevators. To fix this, I increased the flight controller's trim offset so the elevator would try to maintain a more neutral pitch angle. I think I only increased it by like 1 or 2 degrees, but this was clearly too much. Now it was riding a wheelie. So then I reduced it a little bit and it seemed just right. This problem is actually very similar to a problem that had to be addressed with the Thrust SCC, which is the fastest car in the world. 
At over 700 miles per hour, you can imagine any amount of aerodynamic lift or downforce could have a huge impact. If the car was pitched up even just slightly too much, it would fly off the ground and crash. If it was pitched down too much, it would just plow into the ground with a huge amount of downforce and probably never be able to build up very much speed in the first place. This problem is fundamentally very similar to my pitch problem, but the solution they came up with was pretty different. Instead of having an elevator control the pitch like I did, they instead used actively controlled suspension in the rear to raise and lower the back end of the car. This way they could essentially trim the pitch angle of the entire vehicle to create just the right amount of downforce. They chose to do it this way because it was determined that any malfunction of an aerodynamic control surface at high speeds would be disastrous. The system was all automatically controlled by pressure sensors in the suspension so that the driver didn't have to do anything. So essentially the car was just like a lifting body and they were controlling the angle of attack ever so slightly. The goal was to keep the wheels loaded at between 50 and 150% of that from gravity alone. Sounds easy, but this was extremely difficult for them to maintain throughout the entire speed range from 0 to 763 miles per hour. In all of my testing, I never really had any issues with too much or not enough downforce. Even when I had the pitch trimmed too high, the car never tried to take off. It didn't seem to have enough airspeed for that, but it did seem that with a neutral pitch angle, the wheel loading remained pretty consistent with that of gravity alone, which was the goal, so that's good. Piloting this thing is definitely not super easy. Despite the fact that everything is fully gyro-stabilized, it's kind of difficult to keep it going in a straight line at high speeds. Dual rates on the RC controller definitely help a lot. That was quick! <laughs> During this day of testing, the fastest speed that the car hit was only 25 meters per second, or 55 miles an hour, which was pretty lame, so I got Banji to be my chase car driver and we set out to the countryside to do some high speed runs. Here we go, Where just follow that car. Oh, it's in front of the car? Yep. Yikes, I don't see it at all. Okay. It's gonna go fast, you ready? Keep going. I was pulling to the was pulling to the right pretty hard. Oh yikes, dude. Holy sh Okay. Whoa. That wasn't as fast as I thought. That was 71 miles an hour, Daniel. Well that's how fast we were going. Yeah! I noticed that that time it was driving a little bit nose down. So I gave the flight controller a little bit of up trim, so hopefully it'll be flat now. The road's long enough, that's for sure. Definitely have enough time to reach full speed. You ready? Ready. Okay, hang on, I'm not. Oh boy, getting all squirrely. Okay, accelerating. That's full throttle, but okay. Oh, that tail looks like it's kinda turning. Ooh boy. Okay, okay. Rolling down. Oh, whoa. A little squirrely there. How fast do you think that was? Did you look? 53. Is it? You say it like that's not incredibly fast. For a... I mean, some RC cars hit like 200, I think. Wow, that's a big tree. I turned down the roll stabilization, so hopefully we'll have less drag, because it looked like the flight controller was trying to pull the roll to one side. It's nosing down so hard. Why is it doing that? Oh, stick. Oh, okay. Okay. I think it's still scraping the nose. Yeah, I'll need to give it some more up trim. I was doing full up elevator though, and I don't think it was really doing anything. We definitely have some signs of wear on the front of the vehicle, meaning we're still driving two nose down. We've got the mobile hot gluing station there with the EF Delta powering it. Gonna mount the Insta360 Go camera on the tail there. Get some onboard footage. There we go. All right. Follow that car slash airplane thing. 
Oh, Jesus. Okay, here we go. Woo wee. Just kick up a rock? Maybe. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh, it's trying to fly. It wants to fly. Okay, reverse thrust. Sick. Okay, manual mode. Full rates, turn around. Woo! Wow, she whips. That was a little bit of a squirrely run. It was all over the place. Yeah, was I was giving it full up elevator and you could see the nose was kind of riding high that time. Wow, you were very close to the edge. I was right? very close to the edge. <laughs> Sorry about the rock. Very good. Definitely looks like it's going fast. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's going so fast. Yeah. There's where I almost hit the edge. Oh. It's pretty crazy how hot the batteries get after just one run. Not hot, but definitely That's pretty warm. warm. Okay, well, that wasn't super eventful. Didn't go as fast as I had hoped. Didn't explode though. It didn't explode. So what this means is that now we can take it down to that strip in Soto, maybe try a 6S and see how fast we can go. It's either gonna go a little bit faster or burn out all those poor little EDFs. Hopefully it doesn't do that. But if it does, then it's a 270 millimeter EDF o'clock and that'll be fun too. 270? Yeah. That's a, that's a <laughs> That would go pretty quick if it stays upright. Yeah, the challenge would probably be just keeping that on the ground. Yeah. It's like when you're a little kid and you strap a rocket engine to a Hot Wheels car. That's yeah. basically what that would be like. But also, what's the equivalent, like, scaled miles per hour of the vehicle? This? Yeah. Well, we can calculate that. 880 miles an hour! We broke the scale sound barrier. Woo! That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. But, like, also not as quick as the other RC cars, so... So it seemed the motors did not burn out with a 6S battery, even though they are only rated for a 4-cell. Although, that's probably only because the 6S batteries I was using were super old and the voltage was sagging a lot. Kind of puffy, but seems to put out some amps. One interesting thing to think about is how this aerodynamic stabilization might be far superior to a car that had a ton of downforce when it comes to somewhat bumpy roads like this one here. A car with downforce would always have the suspension preloaded at high speeds, but this one stays pretty neutral so it's probably just gliding over bumps much more smoothly. I mean, it's clearly still bouncing down the road quite a bit, but I'd bet a normal race car with downforce would really be getting thrashed. Some of the cracks on this road are pretty big. On some of the runs, where the pitch angle was trimmed up just a bit too much, you can just barely see that it was fully airborne for a split second. With my puffy old 6S batteries, it was able to hit 71 miles per hour, or 114 kilometers per hour, which is pretty lame considering that the RC car speed record is 202 miles per hour. But I'd like to revisit this in the future with some fresh batteries and a bigger EDF. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye. I smell a hot lipo. <laughs> Oh wow, that is toasty. Yeah, it's like just a little bit above one to one thrust to weight ratio.